Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to another Timeless Starseed Transmission. This is for, I mean, really it's for everybody, but particularly it's for starseeds. And within them, this might resonate with you the most if you have like serious heritage or if you're just resonating currently with Syrians because I had them come in really strongly today with some specific messages for us. Basically, I was in meditation and I was asking for guidance about doing this reading um, and I was basically looking to see who wanted to come through and Syrian energy is the easiest for me to identify. It can, I can feel it like physically in my body is like this like, you know, like this deep electrical vibration. Um, so, and I was seeing lots of, lots of blue, like an indigo blue, which I also associate with Sirius. So I was like, okay, cool. That was easy to identify. And the messages I was receiving were all about transformation, about before something new can begin, something needs to end. Something is going to end so that something new can begin. Something needs to be broken so that something can be healed. Something needs to be, you know, your computer needs to be turned off so that it can restart. It's just this over and over again, these messages of ending a cycle and beginning a new cycle. You know, it would be, this would be the death card. Um, not physical death, although that's sort of part of what's going on if you're watching this, like, you know, in the year that I post this, but, you know, energetic transformation. And it was really funny while I was meditating. Oh, and the, the specific message I was actually hearing was start anew, start anew. It is, you're, it is time for all of us to be starting over, to be starting anew. And it's going to be really, really good, guys. <laughs> so as I was meditating, my phone kept like, you know, beeping, like somebody was like texting me a lot, which was weird because I don't really have friends and nobody texts me. <laughs> so, uh... When I came out of meditation, I looked and it was actually my ex-boyfriend who I'm still friends with um, because, you know, we've had uh, lots of lives together in Sirius and Yarga and, you know, we're just kind of over the, like, you know, drama stuff. So we're good, but, you know, I don't actually like talk to him that much these days. So this was noteworthy because he texted me going, holy crap, I can't believe how awesome life is. I feel amazing everything is starting fresh for me. It's like I have a whole new fresh start in, you know, in my health, in my job, in my creative endeavors. He was just like, I can't. And what he said was really telling. He said, I didn't know I could feel this good without being on drugs. He was specifically talking about a prescription medication, but you know, that applies to, to everything, right? He didn't know you could feel this good without being on drugs. That is how good this rebirth that work that is coming for us, that's how good it's going to be. We're going to be like, wow, I didn't even know life could be this good. <laughs> um, another, other examples that were coming uh, through, through synchronicities for me were um, if you've never had glasses, but you've always needed them. And then you put a pair of glasses on, you're like, holy crap, I didn't know the trees had leaves. Like I've never been able to see the leaves on the trees before. That happened to me when I was a kid and got glasses. Or if you've ever been on vacation, suddenly taken out completely out of your life, and you're sitting on a park bench like watching a sunset or doing something else just completely like, you know, low key. But you're just going, wow, I feel so amazing. I didn't even know I could feel this good when I'm not doing anything. And you start to think, wow, I wish I could feel this way forever. I wish I never had to go back to my job. I wish I never had to go back to my home. I just want to feel this like transcendent peace forever, right? Typically, most of us only feel that on vacation, or at least that's the first times we start to experience it on vacation. And then we might start hunting for it. Those feelings, these feelings of going, holy crap, I can't believe life could be this good. That's what we're coming for. <laughs> and I mean, I know I haven't even pulled any cards yet, but those messages are coming through clearly for me. And I wanted to just put that out there. That's what the Syrians want us to know. So, okay, to the cards. As always, I'm going to be probably silent while I deal these out, and uh, so just bear with me for a few minutes. And I'll make sure everything looks good on the camera when I'm done.
Okay, guys, here we go. Um, this universe card was at the bottom of this Voyager Tarot deck, so obviously that had to come out. This sculpture here, if you can see this, it is called the Awakening Giant, and it is an unfinished sculpture. This card, this this particular universe card, you know, normally that would be the world card, is all about being, I mean, you are the universe in microcosm. You are a universe in microcosm, and you have infinite untapped potential. You can awaken your giant, but, you know, currently you are an unfinished project. You know, you're not complete yet. You're not, your awakening is not yet over. You're not entirely out of bed. And this came out, uh, you know, this awakening card is the center of this spread. How cool is that? <laughs> the The heart of this all, the heart of this entire reading in all directions stems out from our awakening. Look at the light beaming off the top of her crown chakra. So yeah, we are we are waking up. Um, I mean, anybody watching this has already had their has already had some level of awakening, but it is coming again. Our awakening is going to start anew. One of the messages I was I was receiving. This is it's all happening again. Um, but first, these top cards uh, using the Wildwood Tarot deck um, are sort of our recent past. I would say. So here we have moon on water. This is the moon card. We have, you know, been going through a time of illusions when we're not knowing the way forward. If you can see, this is like looking uh, over like a marsh, a wetland, and maybe there's a way forward through there, you know? There could be, this is a bog, there could be a path right underneath the surface that would be safe to walk on, like a hidden causeway, but we don't know where it is. And just think of what it would be like to be here out in this bog, out in the at night, right? We got the herons flying overhead. We've got this animal out here with horns looking like he might be harmful if we pissed him off, right? We don't know. We didn't know which way to go. We didn't know if we were safe. We didn't know what the way forward was. But we persevered anyway. With the King of Arrows, the King of Swords, this Kingfisher, this Kingfisher bird uses his intelligence to discern the way forward. So we found our way, picking carefully, carefully, using our intellect and our discernment to find our way through the labyrinth, through the maze of that marshland. And <laughs> beautifully, after that comes the Pole Star. We had... A guiding light, this pole star, is the intelligence of the cosmos. This is intelligent infinity uh, guiding our way and and also beaming that intelligence down to earth, you know, reminding us that we are never alone and we are never, uh, like, without guidance, even if we can't see it. You know, there is a star out there. There is an intelligence out there leading the way. We just have to know how to tune into it. Like, this guy feels like he's lost, lost in the wilderness, but, you know, he has the star to follow. So, that's our past. Right now, the center of this is obviously this awakening card, but first, the Four of Cups. So, <laughs> a lot of you are probably sitting around right now, uh, not really feeling it. Uh, you know, you tuned into this video, and I'm like, it's a whole new beginning, you know, start anew. And you're just like, no. Nah. I'm not feeling it. I kind of feel like sulking like this lady here. You know, it's just uh, not not having a good time. But that's just where we're at right now. So we want to be looking, <laughs> looking to the future to see what is coming for us, which is our awakening and our wheel of fortune. Meaning that wherever you're at right now, everything is about to shift, right? Everything is about to shift. The wheel of time keeps on turning. Nothing will stagnate. Nothing will stay the same as it is now. The shift is coming, guys. <laughs> the shift is coming. Begin anew. Now we're moving into our future with the Voyager Tarot. This, this deck is really cool, all about, you know, voyaging off into the cosmos, both literally and figuratively. Here we have the actor, the Man of Wands, which would be the King of Wands. That's two kings in this spread. Okay. So this guy gets to be whatever he wants. You know, if you're a really consummate actor, 
you can put on any kind of performance. You can assume any kind of role um, and you're charismatic and you attract the audience to you and you magnetically form your environment around you. You know, if you're ever watching a, a stage play and there's an actor who is clearly better than everybody else, he will like steal the stage, so to speak, right? And kind of subtly manipulate the performance of everybody else around him. So this guy has a lot of gravity. So you're going to be coming into both like flexibility and like magnetism. And it, uh, look at this. And it's coming from the purity of your soul. Two of wands. This one says purity up top. I really like that this comes uh, along with the actor because you could think, okay, the shadow side of the actor being uh, somebody who is tricking tricking people who's not being honest um you know you, i always think of the expression you know like never date an actor because you can't tell uh, when they're lying or not or not so i i really like this seeing it as a sign that as long as you're operating um from your integrity from your purest intentions that you will not fall into the shadow side of the actor you will not be deceptive you will maintain your sense of play right of course you know, using your abilities as an actor to manipulate people and to like lie is bad, right? But if you're acting to put on a performance for people and everybody is in this like active creation together, then that is when it is wonderful. You know, everybody enjoys a really good performance from an actor if they're really good at it. And, you know, we know, we understand that it is, you know, a work of art. We understand that it's a work of art. And that is what we are becoming because we are this giant awakening. We are, <laughs> we are the awakening giant and we're not finished yet, but we get to decide. We have infinite potential. Just like the actor, we have infinite potential to decide what we, what kind of clay. We're, we, we're, like we are clay and we're molding ourselves and we get to decide what our new start is going to look like. Ten of Wands. This Ten of Wands, if you can see, has lots of different things. You know, we have it. These look like redwood trees. Could be some other type of tree, but they look kind of like California redwoods. And, you know, flowers growing up out of the ground. We have like a hand. Somebody's like clawing their way out of the grave. And this rose, everything is growing from the earth up, up, up into the cosmos. This Ten of Wands is, you know, well, <laughs> the text up here, right, is growth. So this is a fairly... A uh, big departure from your normal Ten of Wands, which is all like harvest and burden. This is like a higher frequency of that. If you think all of these plants and even this, like the body that belongs with this hand, they're anchored in the earth. So they're growing downwards into the heart of the earth, growing. You're, we're growing our knowledge of like our practical matters and our practical life and our earthly life, which would be, you know, entail an increase in abundance and just feeling good about being alive on the earth. Just like I said, uh, you know, I had that synchronicity uh, while I was meditating where somebody else was all couldn't believe how good their life felt. That's this. But also it doesn't end there. Also, we're growing up into the light, up into the sun, receiving the light and the intelligence of the cosmos beaming down at us, the light of the pole star. the light of the universe. <laughs> it is all coming our way. Um, yeah, so these cards pretty concisely for me um, confirmed the message I was receiving earlier. I, I am going to pull uh, some oracle cards here, but I wanted to mention something about the solstice, if you're watching this like in spring 2020, there's something about the solstice coming up, the summer solstice well, or the, you know, the June solstice. For a lot of, well, like for the, for the collective in general, I feel that this solstice is like the linchpin of all of this change we're going through in 2020. This whole start anew, like for some people, like that that's the center point of it. That's the linchpin. It's all going to be centered around this June solstice. So some of us have already been feeling this like since probably since, you know, the new year or the December solstice of 2019. 
uh, for me, I had like a huge reset, <laughs> like a major, major shift for me happened right after the December solstice. So I've sort of already been feeling it. And some people are going to be feeling it like immediately right around the June solstice. I can already, there's a few people I know, I can already tell, like I can just, I can see their trajectory and I can tell for them this June solstice, it's all going to happen for them like right like that week, <laughs> right around the solstice. Uh, and it's funny, my sister's birthday is on the solstice, so I bet that'll be big for her. My birthday was actually on the December solstice. We're the solstice sisters. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, anyway, other people might not feel it till closer to the end of 2020. Um, there's no like hierarchy here of which way is better. Some people are just, it's just, well, I mean, it depends on like a million things, right? Uh, some people are experienced it ahead of time to kind of like, just imagine a bell curve. It's a bell curve. Most people will be experiencing it, in it, you know, in the months leading up to and around the June solstice. Other people kind of experience it on the ends and that's just how it kind of plays out. Uh, but don't worry. I like, it's all happening for everybody, I would think in 2020. And for most people, June. June is going to be it. June into July. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Anything else the Syrians would like to add? Jupiter return benefits. Holy shit, guys. There we go. The, the, how do I put it? I mean, do you, do you guys, you know, I'm sure most of you know about Jupiter, right? The, the great benefactor, the guy bringing gifts. Um, my husband is having his Jupiter return right now and it has been going well for him, let me tell you. And I have a Capricorn stellium, so Jupiter, obviously in Capricorn, has been blasting over top of all of my planets, and that has been awesome. <laughs> let me tell you, that's been a lot better than having Pluto pass over all of my planets for like the last million years, right? Jupiter return. This is a great confirmation to me of how even if something is going to have to, have to like end the new cycle, it's going to be worth it. The benefits are coming the, the kind of collective energy of a Jupiter return is on its way. Fifth house creativity. You know, this card fell out earlier and I was like, I was like humming and hawing over it. I couldn't decide if it was part of the reading. So I put it back in and look, when a, when a card drops out and I put it back and then it comes out again, that is like, yep, I, I should have just taken it out in the first place. This is what it was supposed to be. Creativity. Um, and the fifth house, which is cool because I was actually thinking a lot about the sun today. The fifth house, you know, Leo and the sun. Um, that's a bit of a tangent, but creativity. With this beginning again, with all of these old structures being broken apart so that we can be birthed anew, that is making so much room for creativity because obviously it's hard for us to be pursuing our creative endeavors or to even feel any kind of creative flow at all when we're just stuck in like the doldrum ho-hum of our stupid bullshit, you know, 20th century human life. I mean, I guess we're 20 years into the 21st century now, but you guys know what I mean, right? So Jupiter is going to be bringing a, well, I don't think it's necessarily Jupiter himself, although it is that. Jupiter's in Capricorn right now, so there is that. But it's also just this, this energy of, you know, the blessings are coming and that is going to enable us to all be more creative. You know, instead of having to work cubicle jobs, we're going to be able to be working jobs that we love and that allow us to have a creative outlet and to experience creative return. That is one of the things that we're going to be, that all, that's one of the reasons all this is happening. Aries, I am. We are also finding ourselves, and it is also Aries season right now as I film this. I am. Wow, that, uh, this bull looks a lot like, reminds me really of this guy. It was like, 
<laughs> this is almost like in Pisces season, we were looking, looking into Aries season, hoping to kind of embody this energy. And here we are finally getting comfortable in our bodies, finally coming uh, back down to earth, finally remembering who we are. So many people are waking up right now, guys. That is something else I have been uh, kind of tuning into with this like new way of being coming in. There's going to be such like an increase in, you know, what we might want to call like magic, right? Like magical reality. Things are going to be so synchronous, so smooth. Um, people, even the most skeptical people are going to start noticing it. Like I know people who just, you know, are 100% totally, um, totally left brain, totally mainstream science, totally logic, 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 everything. I mean, shit, that used to be me. That was me for like forever. I had to go totally through this like left brain paradigm before I came back to a more balanced <laughs> approach. But people who you would never imagine could ever wake up to anything beyond the physical reality, they're going to start waking up too. Because it's going to be, like, you know, I'm not saying like this year or next year. I'm saying, you know, as our lives go by, it's going to get more and more unbelievably magical and synchronous that people are going to start noticing things that they just can't explain. You know, when you notice like a thousand synchronicities and you just go, this is getting insane. What the hell's going on here? At some point, you're going to have to ask what is going on here. And as soon as you ask that question, as soon as you throw that question out to yourself and to the universe, that is such an initiation for people. Things start rolling in. divine masculine coming in right on we had two kings aries i am divine masculine yes i love to see this i was thinking all day about compassion actually i was thinking about compassion and i heard someone say a, say a while ago that they think like jesus should have been a woman because jesus was such a healer and healing is feminine and i was like I don't really know if that's all, like, if that makes sense to me. You know, I was like, that, that's not, like, vibing with me. Because why do we think that, he, fe, like, healing is a feminine thing? Why? Why would we think that? Why can't, why isn't it a masculine thing? I, th I think we just tend to think that, you know, there is some kind of, like, bias that's been going on. Partly because we're coming out of this patriarchal Wow, I just had to sneeze so much. That was weird. <laughs> okay, so part of what's going on here is we're coming out of this patriarchal system, which is making people think really poorly about the masculine to the extent that some people even want to throw the masculine out and just have like this matriarchy up in its place. Well, that's to me is ridiculous and is really short-sighted and is really narrow-minded. So obviously we're going to have perfect, perfect harmony of the both of them. And because of this imbalance, we're starting to like attribute things, anything we think of as good to the feminine, such as healing. And of course, I think healing can be masculine and feminine. And I think both energies have it. And of course, I'm not talking about like men and women here. I think everybody understands that, right? We're talking about, you know, the yin and the yang. We're talking about masculine and feminine as archetypal energies. So I think it's more likely that there is a healing a masculine healing and a feminine healing. And today I was really thinking about how compassion, I see that more of as a masculine energy. And we tend to think that that's feminine. And for me, that's just not true. I think empathy is feminine. Feeling what other people are feeling. Empathy is feminine. Empathy and compassion are not the same thing, though. Compassion, to me, is masculine. I feel like masculine energy is almost more willing to just to forgive it, i'm i'm so much reminded of when i was a kid and you know if i needed empathy i would run to my mom <laughs> if i needed someone to just like you know listen to me and listen to me cry i would run to my mom i would go to her for empathy but if i if i was ever injured if i needed healing if i fell down and scraped my leg or if i broke my arm i would go to my dad he was the guy who would patch me up who would put the band-aids on who would you know 
play doctor, make sure I didn't break my leg. Or uh, that one time when I broke my arm, my mom didn't believe me that I broke my arm. And my dad had to literally smuggle me out of the house because my mom was so pissed off. He had to take me to the hospital to get my arm put in a cast. So, <laughs> and if we're talking about the healing masculine, uh, you guys read Lord of the Rings? We got any Lord of the Rings nerds here? If you think about Aragorn and how he, you know, the hands of the king are the hands of the healer. And how the king all through, like, you know, ancient myths, the return of the king brings light to darkness, brings order to chaos, and brings healing through his presence. So divine masculine is compassionate and is a healing energy. And I think this is <laughs> also, this is coming in from Sirius, right? Sirius is definitely a masculine energy, like really, really, really. So that is cool to me to be seeing you know, Aries, these kings, and this divine masculine, and this reminder that this reminder that the divine masculine should not be thrown out, should not be considered an aggressor. You know, we don't we don't need to think of of the uh, bad things about you know Mars, right? We there's a lot more to Mars energy, to Aries energy, and to masculine energy than warfare. <laughs> You know, it's just like, that would be like saying that, you know, feminine energy is just Kali, you know, is just the devouring mother, is is just the destruction of chaotic oblivion. Sure, that's one level to the feminine. And yes, one level to the masculine is, is warfare, is aggression, is hierarchical structures, and is this like fight for supremacy, but that's just one level of it. And we're leaving like both of those behind. We want to be looking forward going into the like highest, most benevolent, most evolved, most fine-tuned states of these energies. Joy. I don't even need to say anything about this. Life is going to be better than you could ever have imagined. You're going to be sitting there down the road from now going, holy crap, I can't believe it happened. How did we get here? How am I feeling like this? Just look at that. I'm just going to put that right there. And last card. Manifestation. All of this, all that we are working for, going through our awakening, becoming the universe, molding ourselves out of clay to become whatever we want, growing deep, deep into the earth and reaching high, high up into the sky. We're going to manifest it, guys. Hold your vision. Don't let, don't let fear distract you because you might manifest... Uh, some stumbling blocks for yourself if you're sitting there in fear. Hold the vision of the future that you want to manifest because it will never be, it has never been this easy to manifest the future that you want. Write it down if you want. Draw a picture of it if you want. Do a vision board. If you guys remember when Law of Attraction like got its thing with the secret, that, that weird movie. But, but anyway, do whatever you want to do to hold the highest vibration of your future, like like the highest version of your future, because manifestation. We got this, guys. We got this is what we came here to do. This is so important for star seeds because why are we here? Seriously, like, why are we here? Think about it. We're all we're all from all over the universe, all over from other universes. We're from all over this omniverse. We're here on Earth in 2020 right now. <laughs> when this age of Aquarius is coming in, this weird pandemic is going on, we're at, the humanity is at this weird tipping point. Why are we here? We're obviously like you, me, all of us are here to make this shift happen. We are here to manifest this reality. Why the hell would we be anywhere else? Why would we be here during this time if it wasn't because we are literally here to do this? This is what we came here for, guys. This is what we trained all the lives for this is why <laughs> all these lives you had on earth before this they were just all leading up to this life right now that is that is th this current these current incarnations that we are in right now are these pivotal 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 
pivotal lives. <laughs> pivotal lives. So important. I'll be, so everybody I know that who's a starseed has like, has almost like had to live out all of their past, like all of the karmic cycles they've lived through in previous lives on earth. They had to like live them out in this life in like 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, however long it's been, right? And now literally this year, those karmic cycles are ending and then we get to begin anew. This is like, uh, this is it. <laughs> yep. Um, I got to leave it that. Otherwise I could uh, rant about this for a long, long time. So <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for tuning into this reading so that it could manifest in this way. If you guys weren't watching this, the reading would not have been the same. This is a team project. This is a group project. This is all of us coming together to create this. So thank you. I love you guys and I'll see you in the ether.